I won't use violence against racial attacks. Our race can progress by showing our talent. In the early 1900s, major Hollywood film companies portrayed African Americans through negative stereotypes. White performers were made up in blackface. The goal was to create the impression that African Americans were inferior. These movies increased racial hatred and were a factor in sporadic racial rioting and lynchings of this period. Blacks had been depicted in uh, movies, in, in books, and basically in the public media as beasts, as uh, individuals that were uh, on the edges or fringes of barbarism, individuals that attacked white women indiscriminately. And white men took it upon themselves to um, sponsor a holy crusade against, against blacks. During slavery, large numbers of free African Americans settled in Washington, D.C. This was the only southern city they were allowed to create their own society. By 1900, they established a middle class community with its own schools, businesses, and clubs. The community flourished for generations. Charles Drew was born June 3, 1904, in Washington. In Washington, you saw uh, a period of transition at the turn of the century, where you had the old aristocracy, was, which was still very powerful, but they were giving way to a new, more aggressive middle class, who were also becoming educated and who were also seeking to cash in on uh, some of the, the gangs of their forefathers. After Charlie's birth, his father wouldn't let his mother work. He wanted her to raise the children. 19th Street Baptist Church was where they were influenced by their pastor to serve others. Charlie and his father sang in the choir. His mother was a deaconess. His parents made their children hold jobs. Charlie sold newspapers with his brother. After graduating from Stevens Elementary School, he tested his skills at Dunbar High School, the best school for blacks. It was 1918. Charles Drew would definitely uh, receive a lot of benefits um, from what had been uh, acquired by uh, blacks before him. Dunbar High School, which had been uh, in the late 19th century the only free high school for the African American uh, with a, a curriculum that was uh, focused on college preparatory, individuals that wanted to expand their horizons, individuals that wanted to go to college went to Dunbar High School. Uh, Charles Drew went to Dunbar High School, and this is where he began his quest for, uh, to increase his intellect and to seek an occupation, an occupation that would give him the respectability and also put him in a situation where he could command a sense of dignity about himself and a sense of dignity for the, his family as a whole. Drew starred in the classroom and on the playing field. For two straight years, he was awarded the James Walker Memorial Medal for Best Athlete. During Drew's high school years, race riots happened often. Called the Red Summer of 1919, violence broke out in Washington, D.C. and Chicago. Racial tensions were at their height during this time, and the nation faced the a period in which racial classes had been unprecedented. Tennessee, Texas, and Oklahoma also erupted. Red because it was red in blood, the blood of a lot of African Americans and, and whites. In cities like Chicago, Washington, Oklahoma, uh, the racial classes had no definitive location. They happened all over the country. Anywhere you saw blacks and whites seeking to coalesce together uh, in uh, interracial neighborhoods, uh, interracial accommodations, public places, this seemed to excite some kind of racial tension. Also, uh, factors were probably jobs, the competitiveness uh, that was very much a part of this time, and the fact that blacks were now demanding 
and willing to fight uh, for their basic uh, social and political rights. Uh, blacks had ceased to be intimidated by the methods of the Ku Klux Klan and other terrorist groups. In the spring of 1920, Drew's sister Elsie died of tuberculosis. The long illness and death was the spur that drove Drew into the study of medicine in a time when black people were not welcome in the medical profession. Drew's talent was noticed by Amherst College in Massachusetts. They offered him a partial athletic scholarship. He dominated sports at Amherst. By Drew's junior year, he was six feet one and 195 pounds. In his last two seasons, he won the most valuable player award. Coach McClary said Drew had the ability to play on any team in the nation. In track, Drew set a new school record in the 120-yard hurdles. Drew was often confronted by racial hostility from whites. He faced this on and off the playing field. Drew made a decision to fight back, not with fists, but by striving to be outstanding in his profession. In his senior year at Amherst, while running for a touchdown, an opposing player stomped on Drew with his football cleats while Drew was on the ground. He had to be rushed to the hospital to save his leg. Drew completely healed, but the walnut-sized hole in his thigh was a permanent reminder. In the hospital, Drew's doctor told him that one of his patients had almost died during an appendix operation because the hospital's blood supply was low. This incident sparked Drew's interest in blood transfusions. In 1926, he was awarded his degree from Amherst. Drew's next goal was medical school, but he didn't have enough money. Drew returned home to work and save. He was hired as an athletic director and instructor of biology and chemistry at Morgan State College in Baltimore. African Americans were still being challenged by racism. Racial atmosphere at the turn of the century for African Americans was one uh, filled with a sense of denial and defined largely by Jim Crowism. Blacks were denied basic social, political, and economic rights. 